You guys haven't started. <laughs> no, we hey. haven't started yet. We're waiting for you. Has this been recording the whole time? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh. Not yet. I was going to say. I did, but... I did hear some slapping sounds earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I saw Malika's no, background. Couldn't help myself. <laughs> Just like Chris oh Evans God. couldn't. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's, let's get started before let's, we get in trouble. All right. <laughs> all right. So Iron Man yeah. 1 uh, came out in like, what, 2008, I'd say? It's the best year ever. Yeah, before, 2008. Uh, did everyone watch it like at the movies or did you guys? I did, yes. Oh, you did too? I think mm-hmm. so. Yeah, I think I watched most of them. Um, well, anyways, in regards to, I guess, what were our, our uh, initial thoughts? What did you love? What did you hate about it? <laughs> if anything. You know what? In, at the time, yeah. I didn't really, because like, now I have a different opinion on it, because at the time it was the lone movie. So at the time, I would have to say it was just a cool action film. But now, looking at it now, you have so many different opinions because you've seen the whole story. Yeah, that's like in terms of excitement, it's mm-hmm. quite boring compared to the rest of the films. Yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah, that's me. <laughs> this you was probably like, didn't have that reaction when you watched it the first time. Yeah, exactly. It's so different. It, it was pre Disney as well, so I think like Paramount mm-hmm. or something was doing. So I feel like I don't know it was somewhat different in how they did certain parts of it. So the style I would thought was pretty different. Mm-hmm. I I didn't really know how to approach it because up to that point, like. You want the movies before, like Daredevil or ones like that, were more like you would fight like people on the streets and that sort of thing. And then watching it, he's like in Afghanistan taking on like terrorists, and he's in like a cave for the first however part of the movie. And it's like this is a very different sort of a style of a superhero movie. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wasn't really expecting that when I first came in. Yeah, not to mention this was like how long ago? Like twelve years ago. So we were what in year eight? Don't don't say that. <laughs> year, <laughs> year seven <laughs> so like for me i remember like comparing it to like i think the only thing i could compare it to was like transformers because like the effects and all that stuff and transformers mm-hmm. was like oh well, i don't know about you guys for me it was like huge like i loved that movie when i saw it so i was like oh it's like transformers but instead of that su- superhero and but yeah i was like pretty excited for it but i didn't think it'd get as big as it did I feel like superhero movies were so limited until Marvel started with Iron Man. Like, that was so cliche. Iron oh, yeah. Man just broke the bubble so hard. Yeah. Well, the biggest like, ones that you had were Batman and Hulk. Everything it's, else it's was Superman. smaller. Was Hulk like, big? Oh, yeah, and Superman, sorry. Yes. Oh, I was thinking the first Marvel one for me was Spider-Man, actually. Tobey Maguire's one. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That Maguire's. was probably the first for everyone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've blocked that out. <laughs> <laughs> I actually Dude. forgot that existed. <laughs> Toby. It was good at the time. At yeah, the yeah, time, yeah. it was good. We had nothing to compare it to. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, uh, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, right when we first watched Iron Man, we had nothing to compare it to. So, yeah. It was exactly. like, wow. Yeah. So, I yeah. think the biggest drawing card for it was the fact, like, like, it wouldn't happen today, I reckon, but having Robert Downey Jr. cast as Iron Man like, at the time, the guy just, well, I think he only came out of prison yeah, not was long huge. before. He was, like, blacklisted mm. in Hollywood, and having him as, like, the main guy was, like, a massive, huge risk. Yeah, and it was. Yes. Things so good. Like, I don't think that could happen today. Like, could, I don't know. But, like, it's just interesting. I think that was a big drawing card for the film. Yeah. I think his real-life lifestyle fit the character they needed so well. Yeah. Like, he needed to be a little bit, like, snobby and, you know, obviously rich. I think just worked out perfect. Yeah, I saw something that, like, he was saying, like, because someone asked him, when you were, like, doing Tony Stark, were you looking at actual rich people or something like that? And he was like, no, no, I was just imagining what would I do if I was in that situation where I'm a business tycoon and I, like, feel like I know everything, I'm superior to everyone. So he was, like, kind of just drawing on his own kind of thoughts or whatever fun fact trivia is thoughts full in 97 nicholas cage wanted to play iron man oh really (laughs) (laughs) tom Tom cruise wanted to be iron man at one point as well i heard 98 um, the other audition was um uh timothy oliphant or something 
as well. I think Nicholas oh, Cage yeah. just went for every role ever. Yeah, he went for Superman. Superman. <laughs> yeah, and then he got Ghost Rider. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know what? Too. That film, that film had such potential, and they ruined it. <laughs> the f- uh, well, the first one. The, yeah, I like the first one. They need to redo them. They need to reboot them. Yeah, it's a different. Maybe like, oh, different. like a show this morning. Keanu Reeves potentially. Mm. Ooh, like uh, <laughs> that would be cool. He just been ruining people's souls. Him so. Like, yeah, it's a thing. But you look at is that I just realized that picture. Old this mate one. Captain Sexy Pants is looking down her top. Yeah. <laughs> like, but the whole time, Malika's head was like in front of him. So I was like, oh, all right. <laughs> so couldn't see. Malika's just there for the titties. He's there for the titties too. <laughs> mate. <laughs> all right. So back to Iron Man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Malika <laughs> causing problems. How would you Always guys distraction. rank it? in the mcu like do you reckon it was a good start do you reckon it was like heaps different to the others like post disney i think it had i reckon literally set the trend for the whole whole thing i reckon in terms of the standard you've got to be at to be a marvel film i reckon it was set the standard to be honest yeah well it was five yeah it was a good start he did produce it right yeah he produced them all yeah so like I think that, that could have made or break it. That could have made or break it everything, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I, I think I've appreciated yeah. it a lot more as time's gone on. Like when I first watched it, I saw it. I think the my biggest part I appreciated about it was the comedy, like how smart yeah. the comedy was. But Which ever since kept. I've yeah, but over the I've, whenever I watch it now, it's like oh wow, there's there's actually some very deep themes to this film. Like even questions even about you know big corporations doing under the table arms dealing and what does it mean to be a hero and all these yeah. different questions so i i think you got to judge it by the time period when it was made but at the yeah, same yeah. time it, it still holds up even when you watch it today while there's some films at the time you enjoyed it but you watch it today it's like, oh it doesn't really stand the test of time well i think it's Iron like Man X-Men. X-Men was like, they struggled with the humour to action at some points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think when yeah. Iron Man came out, it was like, finally someone can freaking compare, like, you know, combine the two things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. No, it's so true. I, uh, I know, I know, I know. For me, like, when I, because uh, it's probably like pure bias, but I, I like this one the most out of all of them. <laughs> which, which is like probably the whole MCU. Yeah, I rank it at the top. But it, again, that's just probably just pure bias. Out of all six thousand films, this is the one you like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> out of oh. the solo films, it's one of the better ones. Actually, yeah, I probably oh, agree yeah, with okay. that. I agree with yeah. that one more. But like, yeah, yeah. I, I rank it up, like pretty up there. I don't know. Maybe I like Winter Soldier a bit more or whatever. But like, I think what I've found just like because I like it so much that. Most people like it so much more, as Grant was saying, just because once you watch all the other ones, you appreciate this one more because it started yeah. everything off. Mm. But yeah, that's, that's yeah. what I found. Wait, well, didn't technically Hulk start things off? <laughs> what, Eric Eric Banner's one? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I thought Robin was being biased. Mark, that was such a biased comment, I reckon. <laughs> no, it was the one with Eric Norton. Isn't that... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that 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 was after this one, didn't it? It was, it, it was yeah. after. It was definitely after. Um, if you, if you like, look at the dates, it was definitely after, but, um, yeah. and also because the, it like this one had f- in the end credit scene, it had fury. And then in the end credit scene of that Hulk one, you see Iron Man in it. Yes. Correct. Correct. After yeah. being told about the, but I think like, has everyone well, seen the movies? Same year. Yeah. Same year, that. but like, it was a difference of like, what, a month or something. Oh yeah. It is the second. Yes. My bad. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, um, I was going to say, has everyone seen the Morbius trailer? Yeah. With yes. uh, Leto? Oh, Malik has it. Yeah, the Jared Leto vampire yeah. one. Yeah. Well, you know how has in the end Vulture... pushed back? What? Is it getting pushed back? Yeah, but you know how in the end of the trailer, the Vulture pops up? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what the Incredible Hulk was. I don't... I think it was kind of like, we got to make some connection to... Tony oh, Stark right. and all that because you look mm-hmm. at like Mark Ruffalo's 
I'm going on a whole tangent here, but you look at like Mark Ruffalo's whole deal, it's completely different to like Edward Norton's. Like just get something out type of movie? Well, no, it's more like, yeah, they had the Hulk, but I don't think it was like, okay, we're going to get the Hulk and we're going to get Iron Man and they're going to be connected. It was like, because mm. well, they were still trying to figure out at that point. It was like, look, we got the Hulk. We want to get this MCU thing going. So we just quickly get Tony Stark and put him in at the end. All oh, right, right, right. Yeah, it was it was more shoehorned into that movie, and yeah. then eventually <laughs> they got to evolve the character to the Avengers. But I, I've a lot of people tend to consider Incredible Hulk kind of like the cousin to the MCU. Like, yes, it's in the MCU, but then it's not. Ah, uh, okay, I see what you mean by uh, yeah connecting. Do you reckon I Mark just left the chat? No, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon they had any idea? Like back then, 2008, let's rewind 12 years. Do you reckon that the Russo brothers, Kevin Feige, any of those guys knew, like, were they playing this many years ahead? I think they had some kind of end game, we can say, but I don't think they had the <laughs> sp- specific details. I <laughs> reckon they had. Original. That was very yeah. original. Was there. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd say they had, like, Something they were going towards, but as for like all the details and movies in between, uh, that's why they got different directors and all that. I don't, I don't know, but I reckon they had think, something to go towards. I don't know. I, I think they always it. were planning it because yeah. like there was like a deleted scene in the Fantastic Four, like the old one, where like mm-hmm. Mister Fantastic turns into Hugh Jackman. Oh, it's, really? it's really weird. If you oh yeah, 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 it, but... yeah. I remember that the deleted I scene. That. Yeah, you, yeah, that was so weird. <laughs> yeah, so Marvel's always, always been trying it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It just didn't pick up until, mm-hmm. obviously, this one, Avengers. Yeah, that's true. Well, I did hear that they did, like, a, I guess, like, a, a sitting with six other, I don't know who they are, people in the Marvel people, whatever they are. Yeah. Um, they did, like, a 15, 15 day table session, basically, oh, really? planning out all 20 whatever films apparently oh actually oh okay well back in like 2006 oh freak that would have been yeah. x-men days <laughs> yeah like mm-hmm. so back they were saying back in 2006 they did a 15 day table session they reckon they did a basic sketch out of how it was basically all the way to end game and how it was going to end oh, well, but then they did little changes along the way yeah well i think things changed a lot when they started he wasn't meant to be more and more rights mm-hmm. to certain characters uh, yeah true. Yeah, well, I think Spider-Man was like that's a that's a massive addition. I'm so glad they picked Tom Holland because that could have went either way there. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, oh, so yeah, Iron Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can talk about Robert Downey. Like we touched on him a bit, but like how how he fitted his character development. I wish was, I could touch on him. Was <laughs> was like so good. Like I think Grant was saying that he he. You see him in interviews now and he basically is Tony Stark, but like, I feel yes. like the way he, uh, like this movie was about Tony Stark doing the wrong thing or oh, well, trying to do, uh, just doing what he, doing himself and then <laughs> doing his thing. <laughs> I know what you're trying to say. <laughs> yeah, doing his thing and then he, he has like a realization that it's not, it's not exactly right in the world. So. He changes his ways, changes himself, and it's kind of testament to how he had to change himself as a person. So I don't know, maybe he, he drew on things like that. But should we talk about your? Okay. Yeah. But I noticed like the films are really about him writing his own wrongs. Like what everything he's connected Every, to in this film is more mm. everything he feels responsible for. He needs to fix, and that's the foundation where he can go from into future films. Where it's like he can fix his own problems too. I can now fix other problems that I have the ability to help out in. So I think paralleling that with Robert Downey Jr.'s life, it's kind of like, how do I put it? It's sort of like therapy for him in a way, or, yeah. you know, it's symbolic of his own journey and how even we can take from it and how we need to work. I'm turning this into, <laughs> I'm turning this into a life lesson. <laughs> but you, you get where I'm coming from with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think this goes all the way to Ultron, like, that's another thing he felt he could fix and he took that upon himself yeah, he's all, to fix yeah. the world. Yeah. But so, thankfully he did because otherwise most likely wouldn't have vision. So yeah. Yeah. But um, I think that's that, that theme of him trying to right wrongs goes all the way to Ultron 
And obviously all the way till that final snap, basically that's him going, okay, I can finally fix everything in one snap. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah so the, the, the theme definitely continues. That's a good point. Yeah, there's a lot of escalation as you go on through the movies. But in the first one, the first character development of Stark to becoming Iron Man, that was big. But like compared to what he does in Endgame, spoilers. <laughs> if you <haven't. laughs> but, um, uh, what? It's like it's such a big jump from how it started. But even where from where it started, I thought it was it was a pretty big change for him as he was becoming Iron Man. So I thought that was pretty cool. Well, look at Captain America in Avengers. Says to Tony, "You're not the one to make the sacrifice play." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Game. Yeah, like exactly. that's probably the biggest moment there where he's like, "Well." Okay, eat this bitch. I'm <laughs> Screw yeah. you, Cap. I can make the sacrifice. Like, <laughs> but that's one thing Marvel's like been really good at with their. I think in comparison to DC, um, the setting up of things like character development. Uh, you had the Iron Man. <clears throat> um, that's what they did well leading up to Avengers. Like they didn't get into Avengers straight away. It took them what, how many years? What's the how many years between Iron Man one and Avengers? Uh, Avengers of 2012, so it's four years. Four years. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's actually not that long of a time, but they did release a bunch of movies in that time to yeah, develop their doing characters. Like I do two, have a movies a year. I, yeah. I did not watch Thor or Captain America before I watched Avengers. The first oh, Avengers. Really? I, only had watched, I only had watched Iron Man. So I was like, oh, shit, I need to go back and figure out who the hell this <laughs> hot bastard is with blonde hair. Like, but, um, yeah, that's, that's just a confession of mine. I'm glad you feel comfortable to confess that. I'll be back in a second. Yeah, please. well, yeah, this, this is the time to vent. This is the time to be honest, you know. Yeah. But, um, but also, I think uh, I did have a good point. Uh, that was leading somewhere. Um, character development. Oh, yeah. Basically, you look at all the characters, but Iron Man, Thor, basically Captain America as well, Spider Man, all their parents are dead. Literally, they all have dead parents or dead whatever. Like, Seems to be a thing. But like I'm saying, like most of, in terms of I'll be back in a minute, boys. You literally watch Thor's whole family basically die. Yeah. You get to see Tony's parents get murdered. Yeah. Um, you basically already know Spider-Man's story. You already know Cap. But basically, I don't think is there anyone in this whole thing that has parents. <laughs> It, think it's always, it always has to be tragic, eh? The, that's what makes us yeah, superhero, like, apparently. Thor literally... <laughs> Doctor Strange and parents? Stuff. Doctor Strange. Uh, I actually he... don't know. Malika will probably know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where is he when you need him? <laughs> like, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying like they should have parents in the movie. I'm saying that a lot of the... Even like um, uh, uh, Quill, his parents... Yeah. Like, it's just they, they, they focus very big on loss of family. And that's why... They yeah. cling so much to their team and their superhero friends because that's their new family. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does it count as a loss if Quill killed his own dad? Like, <laughs> well, he he didn't know his dad up until Guardians Two A. Yeah. It's sort of like yeah, it's like he killed his dad, but really he just killed some random bloke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But still, like, yeah. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you're right there. Like, it's all. A lot of them have in common, like, no family, so they've got each other. Yeah. But, but like, oh. in terms of Captain America's parents and that, like, they're never mentioned, they're never talked about, they're never even a thing, and, you know, that's just the way it is, which is fair enough. Yeah, yeah. But, and, uh, yeah. Well, we no, finally Captain get Captain America's an orphan, no. Yeah, I think he is. Uh, okay. I read somewhere that he, yeah, because remember in Winter Soldier, his parents, uh, he had to bury his parents, and then... Bucky's like, oh, you'll never be alone. I'm with you to the end of the line. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. And, uh... So, uh, boys, yeah. Doctor back. Strange, not so sure. Hey, Malika, yeah, does, um, does Doctor Strange does have Doctor parents? Doctor Strange have parents. <laughs> <laughs> have parents? <laughs> yeah. We were just talking about how it's, like, a common thing where a lot of the Marvel superheroes have, like, lost, like, some important family member or, like, lost their parents or something like that. It's like Susan Strange or something. <laughs> well, he has parents, obviously. He didn't yeah, just yeah. come out of nowhere. But, like, um, but I can't remember there. reading about that in comics. Were, no. they sh were they shot in an alley? Is it in the New 52? <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be a cool story. 
it'll relate to um, this as well. So Hulk had Norton, and then they switched actors to Ruffalo. In Iron Man, we had Terrence Howard as Rhodey, and then it changed to Cheadle. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and I think she do. I think it was like the reason why Howard left was because he reckoned he deserved more than he was getting. Like he reckoned he deserved the same amount as Robert Downey or something like that. I bet he feels like such a knob at the moment. <laughs> You're like, I could have went all the way to the end if I just bit my freaking tongue. <laughs> who, do you, who do you reckon was better though? Like between the two of them? I'm gonna say I got cheated all the way, man. I can't even remember what the first actor was like for him. They have uh, the same I liked... intensity, <laughs> I'd say. Yeah, but intensity, yes. But in terms of emotions and like different emotions, yeah, yeah. the Cheadle did it a lot better because the other bloke was just very placid, very plain. And I feel like his humour wasn't the best. Like the way he told his lines and his jokes weren't funny. Wait, is Cheadle the replacement or the first yeah. one? Yeah, Cheadle's the replacement. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. I reckon, yeah, I reckon Cheadle was be better. Um, yeah, I prefer Terrence Howard. I reckon he was good when he was Ooh. with Tony, but I reckon Cheadle's better when he's like solo. Okay, fair I, enough. I like Cheadle in um, Endgame, but yeah. I struggled with him in Iron Man 2, but to be fair, there was a few things I struggled with Iron Man 2. <laughs> but it took me a couple of movies for me to eventually be like, okay, I like this guy. But yeah, I, I, like yeah. Job. I had to grow to like him. Uh, yeah. And obviously, yeah, Ruffalo maybe just better. how they position the character and all that. Yeah, I have so to go to like all black people. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, boys, quick tangent. Going back to your question, Dave. Oh crap! I um, had a question. Yeah, about parents. <laughs> oh yeah. Did you look it up? Doctor Strange in Earth Six One Six was born to Eugene and Beverly Strange. In 19 Isn't Eugene Flash Thompson's? Isn't Flash Thompson Eugene or something? <laughs> I, don't know. I think in like one of the versions, like one of the animated versions, his name is Eugene. Yeah. <laughs> so is Eugene classic, Thompson, man. Doctor Strange's dad. And on Earth six one six, apparently. Yeah, and he's got a sister. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's wow. just a miss. You know what? Like, We've like, gone from doctor. Iron Man to Earth six one six. Hey, there's an Earth. It's going well. Six on six iron, man. Uh, That's um, pretty funny. Oh, the villain. What did you guys think of? Uh, well, I guess the Ten Rings. They were one, and Obadiah Stane. What did you think of the villains in Iron Man One? Well, I think it's perfect. Let right. well, you talk first, go. Oh, so I'll, I'll just, I'll, that's my comment. I'm just gonna say I reckon it was done perfectly because it wasn't a large scale movie yet. I'm glad they didn't go large scale villain and ruin it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they it was a person. It. Like I'm saying, I reckon they went, tried to go too big with the villain straight away. It might have just oh. been too much. People were too cheesy. Oh, I'm glad okay, they yeah. started small. You know what I mean? Started small yeah. and yeah, know, I kept it local. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, local. Yeah. That's a, yeah. I don't know if it's a Disney mm -hmm. thing, but like the movies afterwards got us like empathizing with the villains or like trying to understand their point of view. Like, like they, oh, yeah, that's who they started it off with. But with this one, I liked Stain because I just like villains that are just straight up bad, just just because they're bad. <laughs> and then I yeah, Jared Bridges does a good job. At, I don't know, like he kept him human. Like I enjoy the part with the pizza. I know it's such a random scene, but when you know he's <laughs> yeah, like yeah. to Tony, he's like, "Oh, the pizza stays with me. You know, you can have a slice." Like yeah. there's still that friendly banter, but he's such a bad guy at the same time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I enjoyed that aspect of him. Yeah. I think it's it's a realistic bad guy. Yeah, that's, that's true. where everything in Iron Man <clears throat> is somewhat realistic. Yeah. Um, like maybe not that's everyone what, that's what I'm saying. a suit yeah, that's in a cave. Yeah. But yeah. like it's all somewhat like like you were saying, you're touching on the corporations and things. Yeah. Like there's most likely going a bit conspiracy theory here, but there probably are industries and corporations that evil. So <laughs> Yeah, it was just. And then look, real at, look, at, look, look at McDonald's, man. Look at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dude, he was like, like sued by McDonald's now. Like, <laughs> yeah, no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that guy did not get hit there. Oh, again. That's not the worst thing that's been said, anyway. So you, I'd say you're fine. <laughs> I'm just gonna see like 
<laughs> my face and my headband on some billboard like a hacker. <laughs> well, it's, it's Nike, so we'll have some marketing thing going yeah. on there, I guess. I'm <laughs> um, just touching base on what uh, I think it was Michael Robin said about the slice of pizza and the slight banter between. That was yeah. I think because it was neither of us. Yeah. Well, we <laughs> didn't look very alike, so. Right. That's all. Right. Yeah, well, David's, David's Filipino. Yeah, that's another story. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. I just think that because obviously up until the start of that movie, he had a lot of love for Tony because he was basically able to control him till then. So I think yeah. the love for him never really went away. I know everything changed in terms of what he wanted from him, but you can still see the fact that, okay, they are still close um, because he was obviously doing what he wanted him to do up until that point. So I think that's where that comes from. They, you can still have that banter and still have that somewhat care. Because I think does, at any point in the movie, does he ask him to sort of join him and no. be a part of his, like, no, he doesn't really, he just sort of says no. Away. Away. He does in a way. He says, like, oh, oh. We, I think he doesn't he say we could have been kings or something. Like, when he, sh when he gets, when he takes the arc reactor out of his chest oh. or something. I don't know. It's like this well, implication of. He, yeah, but yeah. doesn't he call him a goose, like? Or something like he because like from oh, what i true, got yeah. gathered he was it was like he was just using him all the time like he obviously yeah, needed yeah, Tony. True. so like oh, he the, saying, oh. his golden goose yeah and he yeah, had last yeah. one got one last golden egg <laughs> mm. but he yeah. um he drops it on tony real quick outside that party he just says like who do you think organized a hit on you or whatever he says like oh, he yeah, just literally it, drops yeah. the bomb he drops the bomb hard like straight away he goes from zero to 100 real quick yeah 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 he does yeah no no <laughs> chill no chill yeah, yeah, well, but that's uh, that's a villain problem in every movie. They like telling the good guy their whole plan. Yeah, blah blah. It's a very James Bond. Um, yeah, so I feel like Thanos is the only one to tell everyone his plan and still get away with it. Yeah, because he can. Yeah, he still does it. He, yeah. he can. He's like, I'm going to destroy your wall. That's he backs plan. up his yeah, talk. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> one plot old bad is. Like, so he wants the Iron Man, the Iron Monger suit, so to gain profit from it or something. But then in the end, he uses the Iron Monger suit to run around, punch. I, how, what was, I don't know, maybe it was just, you know, they didn't think it through, but what was his plan at the yeah, end? Yeah, that's what like, I was thinking. Because like, yeah, he just exposed himself. Similar. His plan would have been very similar Back to in two seconds, boys, the Iron boys, Man 2 guy. He would have wanted to develop it and sell it. Yeah. Well, but like, how he, could he do that if. Yeah, sorry, Robin, you go. He exposed, yeah, he's saying he exposed himself. But, like, he, they probably would have tried something similar to what um, Tony did with, like, the press conference <laughs> at the end and having an alibi or whatever. Like, I'm, they, oh, they, probably yeah, had, that's true. they probably had the resources to cover it up. But, like, that's the other thing, like, that's another thing with uh, Marvel. Like, they just threw secret identities in it, all that, out the window, which was pretty different for the superhero genre. Yeah, I hated that at the time, like, because I was so <laughs> shocked. I was like, what? <laughs> but it, now it works. Like, yeah, they just made it honestly. work. Like, there's yeah. no one, uh, Spider-Man, uh, not after the last one, but, like, no one really has a secret identity. Like, they literally well, call like Cap. Unless, yeah, unless you're Batman, you don't really need a secret identity. Like, yeah. most of these characters, their secret identities, like, look, in the comics, doesn't Thor, isn't he like a doctor or something? Like, yeah. Some secret identities are really lame. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Well, I think... <laughs> I just, because, I just, sorry. Yeah. Go, Grant. Just touching base on what we thought about, what was his plan with the suit, da 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 da, -da. Oh, yeah, yeah. I did hear that he basically was going to come out with the story that Tony Stark had created a rogue Iron Man suit and he destroyed him, he saved the country, yeah. da da da, and like come out as the hero, basically. They had the saying, I used use Tony's suit to stop him from destroying the world and like come out as the hero, basically. That was his plan. They had the like resources and stuff to cover it up. Yeah, like, make up a good story. <laughs> like with what Tony did at the end. But in the end, anyway, he was just like, I am Iron Man. And yeah, that's what Yeah, that's what I, I didn't expect that. But straight up, I was like, I always yeah. sort of knew, even when I first watched it, I was like, this is definitely not, this is obviously there's going to be another two straight up and i thought okay and then when he said that i was like okay this is this is pretty cool like <laughs> yeah but yeah because yeah, obviously it's, yeah it's so like not typical for superhero movies to be like yeah, exactly yes <laughs> i'm not gonna lie i think if it, with iron man when he obviously died like we all went together or whatever 
Yeah. For like a good three or four days, I acted <laughs> as if a family member died. I was so sad. There was a like even the missus was like, "Well, he goes, wake up for yourself." I was like, I'm, "I'm emotional. Leave me alone." And like, no joke. Like, and then even then, I was literally watching. Get this, I was watching YouTube videos, trying to find an updated interview with him in it, just to make sure he actually hadn't died in real life. Yeah. Yeah, see, that's the thing. That's what like, makes us yeah. appreciate Iron Man 1. <laughs> Endgame. So, Grant, I got a question. When you watched Justice League and you saw Superman come back to life, was it like a similar experience? <laughs> you know what? I've always been like a ridiculously big Superman fan. Like even since I was young, I've always had it. Like, and when he came back, to, I, I knew he was coming back. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of the actual, I was just like, oh my God, thank God. Because the problem is, I don't, I'm not a fan of Justice League. I don't like that man. I don't even know who that metal bloke is. I'm like, we need the OG Superman here. Let's do this. Oh, ouch. But yeah. <laughs> sorry, Bob. Sorry. That's, it's, not, no, it's, not, it's, it's not hate. It's not hate. It's just I don't favour them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, um, that's another, that's it's another podcast. Like that. Yeah, we'll save it for they another finally, podcast. Yeah. They finally, we're show, going into... they finally showed Superman's real power. That's what I liked. Well, in saying they that, finally anyway. showed Henry Cavill killed it. He was a beast. I love Henry. He's like another man crush. I'll literally marry the bloke. <laughs> yeah. I especially after the Witcher, like that hair. Bring it on. <laughs> oh, man. I kind of right, so, want, yeah. <laughs> want, <laughs> want a Malika for this bit, like, because he'd probably, oh, I don't know if he's a <laughs> comic book, but like. Where is he? Oh, there he is. He's back now. Hold on, boys. I had to do some um, tech support for my mum. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, boys. Got all I got him here. We're talking. Oh, my one's back there somewhere. Um, yes. All right. So what, what did you need? What did you need me for? The next thing was the comic book comparison uh, for with Iron Man one to how how are you using the comics? What do you guys reckon? Did they? Well, does it work better <clears> in the movies, or is it not as good because it's not exactly the same? Whatever. They got it well, pretty how good. How much of the comic was? Influenced by, like, did Civil War come out? Like, the comic Civil War come out after Iron Man? Mm, no, okay. I think Civil War was two thousand and six ish. Let me check. Yeah, that's uh, before Iron Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, way what a guess! Oh, yeah, two thousand and six, two thousand six, two thousand seven. Oh, I'm not yeah. bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. That's why we needed you for this bit. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I have not touched or read a single comic, so I'm just gonna chill. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, like, I, I haven't really either, but I've seen some things, and I reckon one of the things they get uh, pretty well, like other than general plot, is like I reckon his suits were pretty, I don't know, pretty, some, some of them are pretty either good nods to the comic or like pretty close. Yeah, they got a lot of them to match pretty well. Or well, they took, um, they oh, they sort of influenced from the comics. Like they took yeah. inspiration from the suits. But I saw an interview with the person that sort of done all the design for the original Iron Man film. They were like, they were literally on the fence. They were going to make him blue. Oh yeah, no, like dominant blue. Get out! And I was watching the interview like, how dare you even mention that? Like. <laughs> Uh, it wouldn't just, well, it wouldn't, like, you wouldn't know any different, but at the same time, yeah, I think they went the right way. You can't. <laughs> no, but there is a blue. You see the blue. Yeah, but it's not I, the. Um, yeah, I mean, like they're going to make that the dominant sort of color. I must oh, yeah, be tired. No, that's, that's because strange. Why? When you said blue, I thought you meant like Avatar, Robert Downey Jr. I don't know. Why. <laughs> <laughs> that's who my oh, mind <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, next thing, uh, uh, Easter eggs, which uh, mm. that could like arrange. So the rings count as an Easter egg because we don't know anything about them. Like Shang Shang Chi comes out next year, and the yeah. Ten Rings are supposed to be in that. That's what. That's like twelve well, years or thirteen years, and we still don't know anything about the Ten Rings. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and there was and a they screwed up for Mandarin number three. Well, I was yeah, just going to say, like, what do you think about? Like, I just, this more for just the MCU in general, what do you think about Easter eggs? Because, like, for this one, 
to count as an Easter egg, you kind of watch the other ones and then you go back to this one to see what, 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 like what things they put in and you're like, oh, didn't realise that. Like, um, I don't know. I think when you oh, first watch it, but you, you don't know what to look for. So you're yeah. like, obviously when you go back, you're studying that. But when you first watch it, obviously for the first time, like I just wish I could erase my whole Marvel memory and rewatch all the movies again. I think it'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, like, especially for this quarantine business, that'd be amazing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think in terms of that, you're not looking for them. You don't know what to look for. So like, you know, until you get to Endgame and that, you're like, oh yeah, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, like, I it, think, have, it only yeah. would have been hardcore comic fans that yeah, picked up Easter eggs in the first yeah, couple. Like um, nah, back then I wasn't reading them. Yeah, no, fair enough. my depth of Marvel stuff was just Spider-Man. <clears throat> Legit. Uh, that's oh, true. That's true. Is that legit, Robin? Is that legit? I thought you've been like a Marvel fan since you're like three. No, like <laughs> no, I was a I was a Batman DC fan, but like oh, when wow. Iron Man when Iron Man one came out, all I knew, which was like in what 2008, all I knew was um was about Spider Man. But then as we after Iron Man, and then what was that? That Avengers Assemble show or whatever it was. That's yeah, my yeah, zero. Yeah, that's when I was that like, was pretty good. All right, Marvel is now part of my life. <laughs> that's on Disney. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh, really? That's great. Oh, really? Um, but, um, well, of course you're a Batman fan. Your name's Robin. Like, it's pretty standard. <laughs> yeah, I asked my parents why, why they didn't call me Batman. I was pretty disappointed. Um, <laughs> well, Bruce. I can tell you a couple of reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Batman Zeta. <laughs> um, oh, God. It, as if that doesn't lead up. They didn't want to get shot in an alley. That's why. <laughs> that's a good one. Good one. Um, well, how about uh, end credit scenes? Like, I feel like I didn't really, I didn't really notice them until Marvel movies. Not to this extent. I think they, they, set, the standard, they set the standard for what end credit scenes should be. To be honest. Does anyone know what like, the first ever end credit scene was? <laughs> no. Oh, that's first feel. Oh, I have no idea. I think it was Ferris Bueller's Day Off. If anyone knows Actually, what that movie is. No, nah, I don't. I read something that was like Evil Dead somewhere, but that was just like a quick Google thing. Oh, look, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That does, I think, I think he might be on something there. That was like an iconic end credit scene. I'm not sure it was the first one, but it was definitely an iconic one. Oh, really? Yeah. But yeah I know I guess... Deadpool recreated it. Oh, yeah, really? yeah, that's all right. <laughs> yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. I, I was telling Robin I didn't actually see the Nick Fury end credit scene until like just before Iron Man Two came out. Like I had no idea that existed. Wow. Yeah. Why are you on this chat? Like I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, nah, honestly, a separate, for a second now, I, I think I'm sure we nah, all have. For a second now, I was like, <laughs> I think the only one I didn't watch at the movies was um the the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, I didn't see it with the movies. I saw it all the You're supposed to be a Hulk fan, Malika. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you loved that zucchini. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon about, um, like, I don't know if you saw that, about how uh, Robert Downey was like, after the bust in um, Doolittle, he was like considering or reconsidering maybe coming back for some a little bit, some kind of Iron Man role. Well, in saying that, I did hear that, you know how, obviously, Iron Man had Jarvis? Yeah. They're thinking about putting, obviously, Spider-Man and having Iron Man as his Jarvis, basically. So, Iron Man's pre-recorded his whole voice out of that to help Spider-Man out, basically. Yeah, that's that was done. Um, that's, which is that's what I was That's in the comics. When Spider-Man put those glasses on, I was waiting to hear Robert Downey Jr.'s voice. Yeah, Edith. I read, um, I read a rumour or, like, fan theory that he'd be in the What If series, and one of them was, like, rather than Thor going to, uh, going to the Sakaar, that planet where Thor was with the Game Master, it'd be Iron Man. And there was, like, apparently a, <laughs> there was apparently a picture of his um, suit or something and like one of the theories was that like you know when he in avengers one when he put the nuclear missile through the port uh 
the yes. whole like mm. apparently he didn't make it back and he ended up on that planet or something <laughs> that was just you know one what? Of the just a side rumors. note the grandmaster is, is the, well, he's one of my favorite characters this whole thing well i find him so hilarious yeah he's so yeah, great Goldblum, so good yeah like even he's yeah, like that—that that song that he DJs with when Thor first gets there. <laughs> like that was literally my ringtone for like a year. <laughs> well, yeah, that was, so you reckon? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> so you reckon there there are ways they can work back some kind of role for Iron Man? Yeah, but will it have? Will it take away from the effect of his death? <laughs> That's that's kind of my thing. Like, it takes away from Endgame. Because it's but like it, de- it depends how they do step it. all over again. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, w- I watch Avengers and like that scene, which I was so sad about when it first happened. I'm like, oh, it's all good. He's in that Agents of Shield show that I never watched. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's lost. It's lost its effect. Fake fit. So that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> but they'll just still like the comics. In the comics, he. he does come back. He records, he downloads his whole like yeah, but that works for the comics part. thing. Mm. But that works for the comics part. That's the thing. Yeah. Like like so like think about it. Go back and watch Endgame. Say Robert Danny Jr. does come back. Go back and watch Endgame and be and see if that scene has the same effect. Yeah. It's the same well, thing with Loki now. When oh, you say oh. come back, do you mean in like a past tense film or actually like a resurrection? Well, that's if he comes saying, back like, in black, sorry. Yeah, go. Uh, like if he comes, like they're talking about him having a cameo in Black Widow as like footage they filmed in Civil War, like at the beginning of the film or something. Yeah. If that if that happens, that's fine. But if it's like he cut, he's resurrected, or like you know what they're doing with that Loki series, where you know an alternate universe where Iron Man's still alive or something, I feel like that will take away from that big moment in Endgame. And the whole idea of, you know, Iron Man started all this, but now it's time to move on and move on to new things. It will retract that message and be like, no, we've got to stick with Iron Man because we're too scared to move on or something. So this is getting... Well, I saw a thing that said going... the Stones, the Stones recognised his sacrifice and granted him life. Really? That's another one. Basically. Yeah. So does, I was it, like, does it okay, matter that, if it's an alternate? Work, I guess. Yeah. But I think the only chance of in terms of him being alive is in the old, you know, the multiverse or whatever. Yeah. Does it matter if he comes back and it's an alternate universe? Like, I think that still takes away from the effect. Cause then you're like, okay, well my sadness was for nothing. Like I personally, yeah, but I it's a completely alternate. The actual Iron Man is like, he's still dead. Yeah. But I, do, you the <laughs> do you watch the Arrowverse, Mark? Do you watch the Arrowverse? You watch the Arrowverse, right? Yeah, you do. No, nah, I stopped ages ago. He, yeah, and why did you stop? Because of all the resurrections. <laughs> no, nah, because the actors were annoying me. Because <laughs> <laughs> they kept getting resurrected. <laughs> they had nothing to work with anymore. It's like a game of Call of Duty. Just respawn, respawn, respawn. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the other end, though, you got Game of Thrones, which just, just kills everyone. <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm. But that's but, um, like, and it's so bad. Is they're just so straightforward. and You're dead, you're dead. There is no... Yeah. It's like Thanos, no resurrections this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. For me, I'm an Iron Man fan, and I don't think he needs to come back in any way. And, like, for Robert Downey himself, like, it was just one, uh, I don't know, because there were just rumours. And it was just one bad movie, Doolittle. Like, that's better than... Uh, Sherlock Holmes 3. Sherlock yeah. Holmes 3. That's better than Sherlock yeah, Holmes 3. ruining your career. I haven't career, seen right? Doolittle yet. No, good. Obviously, yeah, it's I haven't bad. Seen it I haven't seen it, but yeah. But have you seen the post credits? Is he is he fine then? Eddie Murphy <laughs> comes in. <laughs> Eddie Murphy <laughs> comes in and he's like, "I want you to join the Avengers." What he's like the initiative, the comedian Nick Fury. <laughs> Uh, the, um, there was actually a deleted post credit scene I saw it the other day where Nick Fury actually mentions the mutants in Spider-Man so there was a version they filmed where they were planning on well um, either planning or hoping for the X-Men and Spider-Man to be in it from the get-go oh really yeah that's not going to happen for a while now <laughs> yeah suits nice 
We um, we talk, we I think David said it was like a, such a more down to earth kind of movie. Like it didn't it didn't escalate to aliens or anything like that. So that was me, bro. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> oh my bad. Hey, Greg got something wrong before. <laughs> uh, so oh, damn. <laughs> like <laughs> in regards to like I know escalation. Do you think they they did it? Marvel did it right. Like they didn't really rush into anything. Like what worked well, or was there anything that didn't really work well? Well, that's that was my point in terms of that. Like I definitely think they didn't rush into any like a lot of movies like i'm not gonna say dc but like even other acts just normal action films you can straight away like um what the hell like (laughs) all of a sudden it goes like buying a coffee to getting probed like it's like (laughs) full-on swap you know what i mean yeah yeah i reckon (laughs) reckon (laughs) the only screw up i reckon because they haven't done anything with it yet was adam warlock oh right that movie that yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy. They went yeah. too big in that movie, <laughs> and they haven't done anything with it. Like they introduced the Eternals, planets, all of that, and they've just done zero. Like they went way too big. But you reckon they still get greater? What? I reckon they still got. In terms of the Guardians, they got. I reckon they got so much saved up and so much they can do, and plus they connected with Thor. I reckon they'll be all right in terms of the Guardians. Yeah, but I think for the whole MCU, like those characters, they introduced their powers on a whole another level. Yeah, they okay, went, so they, they weren't too used big. correctly. Well, I was thinking, like, <laughs> if Iron Man, that in number one, used that suit against Thanos, Thanos would just literally like just <laughs> just flick him in the neck. Yeah, that's with, that, with this suit he had there. <laughs> yeah, he probably just like collect his ten cents from his suit. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> This, this one's kind of not much of a point because we didn't really know anything about it yet. But, like, did you guys get excited in any way when you saw things like S.H.I.E.L.D. or the Avengers being hinted at? I had to look up the Avengers, to be honest. I didn't know what that was about. I had to look up S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Avengers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah that's it. Back then, I had no idea. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same as Mark. I just thought, okay, that's cool. The only group I knew of was, like, the Fantastic Four or the X-Men. <laughs> yeah. Which they need to reboot Fantastic Four. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Again. Yeah. They need to get it right this time. Yeah. So that, um, the, obviously, at, when he's in the cave, like, obviously, when he's held captive, the doctor that's with him, is he a bit, is yeah, he so sort of bigger in the comic than he's in the movie or not? He's very amazing in the comics. Right. Yeah, in the anime. I, th- I think. An anime I saw, he was still alive and he makes his own suit. <laughs> yeah, Jeez. he full on makes his own suit and like, I don't know, it goes hard out. But yeah. They'll bring him back, they'll bring him back as a villain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know, <laughs> that'd be so stupid. He was a really good character. He was like part of, a big part of the Robert Downey, uh, oh, sorry, the Tony Stark development in the movie. Yeah. Well, like, he stopped him from yeah. breaking, basically. Yeah, that's, yeah. Well, I think he was like someone, how do you put it? He's sort of that traumatic experience to push someone forward at the same time, that inspiration of being like, this person died so I can live, so I have to do something with my life. Like, the whole thing, he's like, oh, don't waste this. Like, I don't know, there's just something about that. Really? That carries on throughout the whole MCU for Tony, anyway. Yeah, and now I, Spider-Man will live off Tony in a similar way. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I think all 20-whatever movies, Iron Man spends those whole movies basically in guilt over something. Yeah. And that's, that's why true. he I think it's like, always fixing something. Well, he said um, in the first one, I shouldn't be alive. And it's this is going to sound pretty depressing, but I think it's this whole idea of he did actually die in that cave and everything he's done ever since then is sort of like, I'm talking symbolically, but it, like this thing of being like, I know I'm supposed to be dead. So I'm just going to do what I can to fix the world before I'm actually move on. Uh, does that make no, sense right. in a way? <laughs> yeah, it does. What you're saying yeah. it does. Yeah. yeah. yeah but, and then that's probably the guilt he carries as well is when he does, like a couple of times he did try to do something big and good 
he creates yeah. Ultron and stuff yeah. like that. That just yeah. creates more chaos and more people die. Yeah, that would have been affected him heaps going on towards Civil War. Because in this one, mm. all it was, well, it was still a big thing. It was just his weapons were being used by terrorists. So it's always a big thing where something he, he's done or he's created becomes used for evil. And that's yeah, well, it's a definitely out. a theme. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Rick, that's huge. That's true. But um, I just think, um, obviously, in terms of Iron Man as a film, like, I'm not saying I, I love the film, and as you said, it's probably your favourite. But in terms of the, I'm not saying meaning, what I'm trying to say, in terms of, like, the shocking moments and the Easter eggs and that, like, you look at, compare Iron Man to something like Civil War, the scale of that compared to Iron Man. Yeah. Like, if you were to yeah. just only watch those two movies, you'd be like, Iron Man shit compared to this. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, yeah, but they didn't even... You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying it is, but if you yeah. were to watch it like that, 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 I think in terms... For me to fully appreciate Iron Man, you have to watch every single film. Yeah. But I, th- I think... Yeah, go, David. I think I'll compare Iron Man and Civil War to say A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. As in, yes, Empire Strikes Back is the better film, but it works off A New Hope being the classic and the foundation. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. And I think too, like, in regards to Escalation, they were working with what they had at that time and trying to set up this small scale. <clears throat> well, in comparison to the Iron Man we have in Endgame. They were just trying to develop him. And I think, I think that's why I really appreciate it because it's something, This for this one, it's just carried on from the first one and carried on throughout the other films. But in, in saying that, the other films do carry this movie. Yes. Yeah, the legacy sort of thing. Yeah. Marvel's done an excellent job at not dropping the standard over the course of 20 plus movies. Every movie has gone bigger and better. No. Oh, there's like, a that's couple hard of exceptions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's not, let's not generalise too much there, Grant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, you know what I mean. <laughs> Incredible Hulk was, was pretty... <laughs> I think I think it peaked with Incredible Hulk, to be honest. But <laughs> they need, I, In all honesty, they need to reboot, like... Well, not reboot Hulk, but they need to do another standalone. Yeah. Well, the only thing I was going right. to say is Iron Man 2 and 3 were not great. <laughs> Yeah, that's especially true. especially that's three. Oh man! Oh, that's debatable. That's debatable. Well, hold on. Iron Man two. Yeah. It was our only number two movie to come out before Avengers. Yeah. So, but we were talking about them rushing, rushing the MCU. Iron Man two is an example of them rushing the MCU to me. Mm. Hmm. What? That's what? agreeable. That yeah, yeah. three for me is the worst. Yeah. Number three. There wasn't much in number two that added towards, let's call it the infinity plot in in number two. But number three was just literally a standalone storyline, basically. Number three as well, I guess, because it was all, that was all Iron Man development. Mm. I feel like they didn't really have anything for Iron Man until Ultron. So they were like, okay, we need to fill it up with something. And Avengers. Yeah. They're like, well... What are we going to do? We, we, our biggest plot is in with Ultron. We just need to throw a random guy in who glows and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, they were probably just trying to keep the cash flow. Just ride the, ride the Iron Man roller coaster for a while. Well, they knew everyone would watch Iron Man 3 after yeah. Avengers. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was the hype. They needed to keep releasing movies. They probably thought, we don't even have to make this good. Everyone's just going to watch it because it's Iron Man. And it's almost well, 4 2. Thor 2, except for the Infinity Stone, or whatever, if, unless that's one, I can't remember. Yeah, that, that, except for the little the ether was red true. stone. Yeah, yeah, except for the oh. ether, they haven't done much else with that. So they haven't done anything else with the Dark Elves, even but, though Malekith oh, yeah. is huge. Yeah, Thor, Thor said he got quite bored. Thor said he got bored with the uh, Chris Hemsworth. Said Chris he got Hemsworth, bored yeah. With the Thor character. yeah, that's why Ragnarok was so different. Mm. Mm. I yeah. think that's why they just left those stories behind. Because they're like, we just want to detach from those. Chris Hemsworth himself said, I want to detach from the first two movies. <laughs> they could, but they could almost do another Avengers level style with Malekith. Like from the last comic run that I was reading, it's a world, not just Earth. It's literally the whole universe. It's all nine realms. 
Well, they have a lot. Movie. They have a lot of characters like that. Like in Iron Man, yeah. you have the Mandarin, which they still mm. still haven't. No, still haven't done properly. Yeah, not really. It feels to make too. more of those. But it's like that's it's, the guy from Thor two, the really strong monster that crushes the stone thing. I mean, they curse. Oh, I think his name uh, is Curse. Curse, yeah. like they, mm. like if they have like an army of them. You'd be, everyone be screwed. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's it's, that's just the thing. It's 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 going back, which is hard mm. to do properly anyway. Mm. Other than rebooting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's recast Iron Man, guys. <laughs> like, at least they, redo. they did it right with Spider-Man. They didn't have to go through any of his origin. Mm. Do you feel... I'll say, I said this to Robin the other day. Do you feel the Iron Man benefited the MCU, but in some ways the MCU didn't benefit Iron Man? Because, like, don't get me wrong, I think his storyline in the MCU is fantastic, but I feel like there were some plot threads in Iron Man 1 that could have really worked well in an Iron Man trilogy, but because they had to do so much setup in coming from the first movie, they weren't able to achieve that. Like in Iron Man 2, they tried to deal with, you know, alcoholism, but they couldn't go thoroughly into that because yeah. they had to set up this whole thing. And then Iron Man 3, they wanted to deal with, is, is it the man or is it the machine type and PTSD, but they couldn't go fully into that because they got this big world. Yeah, they Disney actually had those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So they didn't have time to fully go in depth. I think that was one big thing yeah. because the Disney influence. I think that had a big effect on how these movies intended to come out, come out versus how they actually came out. Like yeah. I reckon a lot was. You filtered. couldn't have like, yeah, you couldn't have like a Logan example with Tony Stark. Like, oh you yeah. Couldn't, yeah, which is fair because mm -hmm. that's what the MCU is, but it's just. That's it. Like, obviously, you couldn't. You don't need to go to like a MAR rating level, but they couldn't go to that depth of being like, let's have a film where we show Tony Stark dealing with like, alcohols, or yeah. like full on going to PTSD. Like, but do you think? And that's probably where that, like, like you were saying, MCU has its effect. Do you reckon that would have had really any impact on the bigger picture? Like, is that necessary for them to have gone into that much depth into some of those things? It would have been interesting. That's what I think. But it worked what they did. I'm just saying I would have found those things. Yeah. I, yeah, I think it would have been more interesting for older audiences or people who <coughs> really like character development more. Because honestly, no. I doubt anyone noticed, like who actually watched the movie, like properly would have noticed his alcoholism or the PTSD. Like they would have just yeah, been like, true. like everyone, as, as we all know, like everyone was like, oh, those, those movies were just... They were just there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were they were filler almost. But yeah. they actually I think it really shows us yeah. like how much it really pushes the fact that how much responsibility was on Iron Man. Like even though he did have those issues, basically as soon as he had those issues, someone was like, You don't have time to have those issues, you're the main key here. Like, yeah, yeah you can have your exactly. alcohol, you can have your bloody anxiety attacks, but we need you. So it's sort of like yeah, that's happening, but you don't have time for that right now because you're the you're the you have so much responsibility. You don't have time to be having panic attacks. Get your shit together. Yeah, like you know what I mean. So maybe in yeah, that way, yeah. that's how the MCU affected Iron Man's. I guess how much he stood out because I think what was more important, both in the movies and in regards to the whole saga, was the Infinity Saga, not just Iron Man, and in this case. It's not just about Tony Stark. It's about the world or everyone else. Yeah. Maybe, yeah like, it was that's, the bigger picture. That's probably like grasping, but like <clears throat> I'd say seems like the case. But I, I do really think Disney had a big role in how things were portrayed, which is why, which is another reason why I like Iron Man 1 because it's pre-Disney. Pre I think yeah. one thing we haven't touched on is Pepper. What do we think of Pepper as a character and as for him? And her development. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, she's her. about a seven out of ten. Okay, putting <laughs> putting ranking aside, I liked her in Iron Man One, but unfortunately, she fell into that whiny love interest category in the next couple of films. But she redeemed herself in Endgame. I found the way she was handled in Endgame, and even her whole part of being like, "Tony, we're going to be okay." Like, to be honest, in some ways, I see that as more realistic than. 
oh, Tony, oh my God. You know, I just, this whole idea of like, Tony, everything's going to be okay. Like this understanding of him as a character. That's what I'm like, saying. Understanding her partner. But yeah, that's my. It shows right how else. well she knows him. And obviously she, she's seen all the behind the scenes stuff of what he's been going through. Yeah. Like and she's straight away. She's gone. Okay. Understand why you did it, and you can relax now. Like she knows him better than anybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I think yeah. I don't know. I the end the annoying game, part. the end game. Pepper was more like the Iron Man one. Pepper. Well, she was yeah. a bit. Well, what was she like in number two? She was whiny. They like had fights all the time. She's like, oh, I, 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 she was I, outshone by um, Black Widow as well. I'd say. I think yeah. she became a little yeah, bit most, most holy. <laughs> Not in yeah. that. Yeah, actually, in that way too. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's weird. Well, uh, in number three. Even, yeah, but in number three, they had another female there as well. Like, it's kind of like a not really a love interest, but a past oh, yeah, love interest. Yeah, the scientist, yeah. But, Mm. There was some jealousy going on. Yeah. Yeah. So they set it up. They set her up for failure in a way because it's like, <laughs> yeah, you're the love interest, but then we also got this other person who's we have to develop them. We got to develop you, and then no one gets really developed. Like, mm. yeah, she was. I'll say she's developed better in the movies than she is in anything else. Oh, actually, I can't say because they set him up. They set him up as a massive playboy in number one. So they had to yeah, keep yeah. bringing some chicks in. You can't go from playboy to one woman man, just boom, like that. Yeah, yeah. There has well, to be Mark, some sort of... Speaking well, from experience, Mark right? will be like that, so we've got to prepare for that. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. Pepper in number one was all right. She was good. Yeah. Yeah, she was, she was more a workaholic, and I think that didn't allow her to be annoying. Yeah, and she was actually like a uh, support for Tony in a way. Hmm. Like she did things. Oh, he, he, he relied on her heavily. Yeah. yeah. It, it was somewhat reluctantly when he changed that she'd do things for him. But um, yeah, <laughs> no, she was good. But even she was the one. Sorry, Gray, I'll let you go. No, you go, you go. Yeah, I forgot. I really no. forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> well, like she was the one in the first one that, yeah, she goes and gets shield. She goes and like. Sure, she did like go and get the FBI for like Justin Hammer in the second one, but I just felt she was a more self assured character in the first one, while the second one, it was just like she's a CEO of a company, which would have been very interesting, but the whole time it's just, oh, I'm sick of managing you, Tony. I'm, you're out of control. You're this, you're that. And it's just, again, annoying. Like it's not really character development, it doesn't really show her as a character. She's just there to, I don't know, just. She's just there. I don't, she's just, yeah. She went from, I'll do anything yeah. for you to, you're annoying me. <laughs> yeah, which was annoying everyone it's just, else. It's just more that oh. it just shows that the movies were filler, even when their characters were, pretty much. Oh, yeah. 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 I feel like yeah. they couldn't have Iron Man as a playboy for three movies, so they just had to throw someone in there to hold him back, basically. Yeah. What about um, Happy? Did, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's the best, bro. Jordan Favreau? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's awesome. Uh, you see, you know, people that, like man. that, people like that can make or break a movie too. Even though they have got small roles, they can make or break a whole film. Yeah, but, but I think yeah, you see what? Sorry, I was saying. I think he made all three films. He was like consistent. Yeah, mm. even in Spider-Man. Even Spider-Man. Yeah, like, Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, you see even in the first one, like, it's interesting because you see him in the first one, the way he talks to Tony, it's like, oh, sir, yeah, how are you going, sir? You know, it's a very professional relationship. Then oh. you go to, like, two, three, yeah, I remember this stuff. <laughs> you go to two, three, and four, it's like, he's his best No, no, no. They, uh, they really they had, start, yeah. They had moments of, like, uh, that, like, as buddies, because, like, you know, when the, the bit, when they were driving to... The plane they were like racing each other yeah but when they get out happy because tony says something like oh how fast was i was going and he's like really fast sir not really yeah. fast tony like you know yeah. but then maybe because then in spider-man homecoming they had like a more professional relationship so maybe their relationship changes depending on the setting i don't know like, oh, okay. like there's always like that casual like, type aspect to <laughs> it but i thought there was a funny bit in the first one where like 
you know, the reporter comes up to talk to Tony at the start and then he goes yeah. to Happy. He's like, Happy's like, she's cute. And he's like, oh, she's yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then he turns around and talks to her. <laughs> it's little things like that that emphasize how long they have been together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah the inside jokes, that it are. <laughs> oh, that, that's another thing. So in regards to the the script and like the uh, dialogue and that apparently i heard that favreau's kind of like a like they do right but like he's like he likes improv he's like on the spot stuff so there was quite a bit of dialogue that was just straight up robert downey that's pretty sick oh yeah i can say that yeah yeah well that's why i thought ragnarok worked because there was just Kill so him. much ad lib like yeah, yeah. i think you get the right combination it doesn't always work but if you get the right director right actors it can really work yeah yeah that's correct i feel like if you are around rob Downey jr your life is easier because <laughs> he literally like even in his interviews as as we said before he basically is iron man in real life like well, just the way he talks the way he handles himself like yeah. it's just really like watching a marvel film that feels that's a few of them though like you watch like benedict cumberbatch interviews or ones with hemsworth <coughs> and they pretty much transform into their characters on the spot like, the only reason they don't have I'm, to change because I think cumberbatch a bit is a bit more diverse though he's, he's he reminds me of like hiddleston like they can well, maybe it's just because yeah. i've seen impression videos <laughs> or impersonation <laughs> ones but, like, it's because cumberbatch and that don't they their look doesn't change that much from real yeah. life to MCU. They, you know, that's why. They're like obviously, Thor, if he's not got the long hair and the suit and that, that's why. But Iron Man and Doctor Strange, they look similar in real life. That's why. Yeah. That's why they're so much like that. Doctor Strange, though, for uh, is he British? Yeah, coming back, yeah. he pulls off a pretty good American. A lot of them oh. do actually. But if you look at yeah, all of his, um, he's real versatile though. Like you said, his old screenplays and that that he done, like little, even just his little like theater stuff. He he can do like fifty different freaking accents, and he speaks all these different languages. Like he's pretty very yeah. talented <laughs> to do theater, and obviously in terms of not so much musicals and whatever to to go a good two hours without bloody laughing and doing some of the things they do. I think that's talent in itself. And it's always one take. There's no... Yeah, and that's what no. I think is so talented. It's one take. There's no room for error. Some of the things I'm looking at them going, I would laugh if I had to do that. <laughs> like, how oh, do you yeah. not laugh? <laughs> but that's even like the movies. When they're shooting some of those bits in the MCU, like, I wouldn't... I would have been doing like 50 takes. There's no way I, I would have been able to say serious. Count. You can look it up per scene, take count per scene. And some of the scenes are like 52 takes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. obviously the real funny ones. Do you know the worst one I found was um, Vision in, um, in Infinity War? I think all of his scenes, he had like 30 plus takes on every freaking line he did. Oh, really? Because they were making him laugh. Where did like, you see it? Imagine how annoying it one of the set. One of the uh, it's, it was a website I found. It was like ah, right. it's literally called Takes Per Scene, and it's got different movies. Oh, really? And Infinity War was one of them, and then had like um, I Man Two and Winter Soldier and that. But like, yeah, basically, it's it was pretty cool. I'll, I'll try and find it and send it. But yeah, it's like I was looking at it going. I don't know if it's legit, but I'm, it might be. Like, because yeah. even when you watch the bloopers, like you go, oh, I see. Like you can tell they've done that scene like a hundred times. But yeah, what is, this thing's. Where does Iron Man rank for you guys among the uh, <laughs> characters in the MCU? You can, you can, I don't really care. You can either go power wise, which probably isn't insanely high. I'm just going to go off how much I like them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll go, go to that. And how much impact it's had on me personally. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. I'm going to put him in second. Thor's second. my first. Ooh, nah, Iron fair. Man's second. Fair enough. I'll just need to be full fan forever. So that's just me. I'm not actually sure. Where would you rank Iron Man fits in uh, the Marvel superheroes? Like, obviously above Hulk, but where? Oh, that's <laughs> no, not like um, just like uh, you're crossing the line, Grant. 
Sorry. What, him as a character or just the movie in general? Him as a as character. A character. Mm, so, wait, in the MCU specifically? Yeah, yeah. What else is he in? Well, no, I mean, like, <laughs> like cause if, we're saying Mar- if we're saying Marvel, I would have, like, put, like, Wolverine a bit, obviously, oh, higher. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, That's yeah, like, strictly, strictly MCU. Yeah. Okay, and the movie, sorry, I remember that guy, the movie specifically? Yeah, uh, well, no, nah, just Iron Man in general. Like, oh, no, through the three, through up three until, phases. up until, yeah. Okay, oh, I guess since it's focused on Iron Man, oh, no, nah, we can't do that. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, where like, do you rank Iron include, Man in terms of I don't want to include, the like, Avengers. Punisher or Daredevil, though, because they're oh, really no. complicated. No, no, no let's the, just say uh, in terms of the Avengers. Where do you uh, rank him in the Avengers? Avengers? Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, okay I'll probably have him... I'll probably have him as the main one. Yeah, probably the top guy. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> the most biased I've ever been in my life. I, uh, Why is it biased? <laughs> I hate... Uh, I hate to... I'm glad Chance isn't here. And you know where this is going. In, in regards to, <laughs> I've like, upset chance a few times. It's all good. Out of pure bias, <laughs> uh, I have to. Yeah, Iron Man. Yeah, but like, I can't uh, wait. I can't wait for me. What? Huh? What's he for you? I wouldn't. None nah, for me. He. Oh, I like a couple of the others too much. Yeah, because like, like who? For me, like I, I put I Strange and Panther. No, oh right, right. No, but like. Okay, we'll go with original Avengers. Oh, right. Yeah. Isn't Panther an original Avenger? Like Avengers no. 2012. No, no, he's not. He gets he vaporizes. 2012. Also, oh, cool <laughs> Avengers, yeah. right? Hawkeye. Oh shit! That. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, after Endgame, I would put Hawkeye up there just because of his development at Endgame. Yeah, that's true. No, I, I'd still put Thor and Hulk above him. That's fair enough. You put Hulk in everything. Like, That's if we were a nice power Hulk, play. Of course, I would say Hulk. I, <laughs> I actually, I, I love Iron Man, but I, I have a like solid appreciation for Captain America. I don't know what. I think just Civil War and Winter Soldier. There's just a lot about Cap that I like. Winter Soldier yeah, was the movie. Oh, Winter well, Soldier no, just in regards to, yeah. In regards to Cap as he is, like the way he was in Civil War, he stood for, he stood for something, you know. Not that none of the others do, but like I don't know, there's just something about that. Uh, just so I can end recording, is there any more else, anything, any much else Iron Man you guys want to discuss? Um, you can keep talking though. But like, <laughs> is that it for Iron I Man? Pots isn't, Pots isn't high in the rankings for me. <laughs> I think hey, we still... these redheads, mate. <laughs> still like crazy. David? I think we're still going to... Like, you saw in Far From Home where they brought back the guy from when um, Obadiah was like, Tony Stark built this in a cave. And like, you never really thought of that guy. Yeah, and the guy with the glasses was one of the bad guys in Far From Home. Oh, yeah, so there's I an think, Easter egg. Yeah. yeah, so I think mm. we're still going to see... And now, like we said, Shang-Chi with the Ten Rings. I think we're still going to see references to that movie. And regardless of whether Robert Downey Jr. continues or comes back or whatever, I think Iron Man will still have things that can be drawn from it to help set up other movies. So yeah, we'll so. always be learning about Iron Man, I reckon. We'll always be learning about the characters. Even if supporting character number five rocks up in the next Spider-Man sequel, we'll <laughs> learn something new. Like, <laughs> Could be stuff. I mean, people he affected before oh, Iron Man. Either. Yeah, well, yeah, even like that's that, what happened yeah. in number three. Yeah, that's what it is. Iron Man. Do you reckon that's pulling at straws? Sometimes I reckon, like you know the the thing in Iron Man two where he saves that kid and turns out it's Peter Parker. That is that is a huge pulling at straws. What? Yeah. There's a bit in Iron Man two at the expo or something, Stark Expo. He's getting attacked by like some drone. Iron Man comes in and saves him, and is like, "Good job, kid." Yes, I do remember. I I used to watch that and be like, "This stupid kid." (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, oh, that's that's actually Peter Parker. Like, oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, I reckon, like, there's so much. The comics are so content rich; they don't need to do stuff like that. 
Yeah. Like they've got like 60 years worth of content that they can pull off. That's they do it because I think obviously Disney just wants you to go back and watch watch their uh, watch their movies. <laughs> uh, such a Disney. I heard thing. Buzz and Woody are making a cameo soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of the uh, while we're talking about Iron Man, obviously the kid from number three ends up at the funeral. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, that's big. gonna be. Mm. What do you think his role is gonna be? Oh, I read it. No, I can't remember. I read something, but no, I don't really remember. You read it on Reddit? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I honest. love Reddit. Reddit's the best. I well, think he was supposed to be what Peter Parker became, but. Spider-Man's better. Peter Parker became, yeah. yeah. So they're like, look, you can have this cameo in Endgame and then you can go off and do your own thing. I feel like they brought him in because Spider-Man got kicked out. And then Spider-Man got brought back in. They're like, oh, you can still, you can just stick around for the funeral. (laughs) (laughs) It's like a pity invite. But in terms of, I'm just going to go way off topic here, but in terms of the, um, at Tony Stark's funeral, Obviously, those people, as the camera goes up the line, those people are placed to where they are for a reason. Yeah. Do you think that's in terms of importance or just in terms of just a random sort of placing? Could be Who either. Was last? Nick, Nick Fury. Fury was last. Yeah, so Nick Fury was last. <laughs> so he's not important. <laughs> or, I was thinking, <laughs> if it was that, it could have been order of when... No, nah, that can't be. I don't know. Who's oh, but Fury's, Fury's always a person that's at the back. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I feel like he, he just rocked up. He like, works in the shadows. <laughs> he's always in the shadows, so that's his theory. Yeah. Maybe they all just have different meaning. My theory is that Fury rocked up late. <laughs> <laughs> he's a scroll. He's a scroll. That is, that's oh, scroll Fury. See, that's, that's, I love that part <laughs> in Spider-Man with the scrolls. That's like, that opens up a whole other box. Yeah, yeah, that's like that's like another three, four years worth of Marvel. Maybe movies. the Iron Man that snapped his fingers was a scroll, and Iron Man somewhere else. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, can we just like cap off so I can stop the recording? Like we can still talk. <laughs> cap off Iron Man. Yeah, um, yeah that's all there is. Yeah, that's one closing was thoughts. The foundation for what is today. Sorry. For, today, for everything that's Let's happened see. in the last day. Even this virus. The foundation. Oh, it originated from the cave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, All diseases came from that cave. Yeah, dude. Iron Man. He's basically a walking infection. That's why he wears a suit. Iron Man. Uh, yeah. It, it's, it's, a good, it's good for the legacy. Final, final rating out of 10. 11. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, what's the general? Uh, eight. Yeah, eight. Eight out of ten for me. I give it a yeah, solid eight. eight. Yeah, seven and a half, eight ish. Eight point five. Is it because Hulk's not in it? If if Hulk was in it, Mark, would you give it an eight? Ah, uh, eight point five if Hulk was in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll close it off there. scene in Endgame was of with Iron Man is him and Nebula. <laughs> She's blue. Yeah. Uh, maybe you know, like, throw. Maybe they got it on. They're gonna have like a blue kid. <laughs> I still can't believe she's the lady from um, Jumanji. What's its name? Jumanji. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bro, gets me every that, time. I, I just saw her in a whole different way. Like I was like, this blue bitch is turning me on now. Like, <laughs> let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, totally right, man. I feel like, uh, see, you know, Captain Kirk just into the coloured people. <laughs> see, that's why I told you we need to do a 40 minute special on it. It needs its whole episode re <laughs> Like, at least they, they, do. they did it right with Spider Man. They didn't have to go through any of his origin. Mm. He's just got a hot auntie. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lot better than the Artie or whatever from she'll, the she'll be on the, the other podcast as well. <laughs> the, we'll just call it Malika's podcast. <laughs> the same <laughs> way I am set session. up the MCU, this is setting up the podcast about ranking all the females in the MCU. Like, mm. I still reckon they could have made Civil War slightly better. But we shouldn't have been called Civil War. <laughs> Mark's no. like Hulk should have been in it. <laughs> we'll get to that movie. <laughs> 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 I can't wait for 
chance to join because I got a bone to pick with him about the first Avenger that I've carried since <laughs> I was like 15. Like, this is a life. This is 10 years. So I'm ready Brothers, to screen record for sure. <laughs> give, us, give, give us a quick spoiler about it. Give, well, give us yeah, a, come on, a I always say nothing. Okay. Well, basically.